In the UK, in London, near Oxford Circus and behind Hamleys, on the corner of Lexington Street and Broadwick Street is a pub. And this pub is the Jon Snow. Okay, so clearly this guy's name, or at least a deviation of it, has had its clout unfairly stolen in recent years. But I think that's a great shame because this guy is so much more interesting than some fictional character. Because this is THE Jon Snow. And this is why he matters. Looking around me now, it's hard to imagine, but this area of Soho, like many other parts of London, used to be an absolute slum. When the Industrial Revolution began, millions of people moved to the cities looking for work and the population soared. Except city planning wasn't quite what it is today, and with so many people arriving at the same time, living spaces became crowded, houses were hastily and poorly constructed, and before long entire swathes of London were taking a big nosedive in quality of life. In addition to that, given that the standard model of these houses consisted of a small single room per floor with multiple inhabitants and a cesspit underneath, it's not surprising that these areas soon became infamous for poverty and disease. In fact, when the Times investigated the slums near Soho, they found two families living in a single room, amongst whom two boys had fever and one woman had cholera. Cholera was the biggest and scariest disease at the time, causing a few days of horrific suffering before death, it appeared randomly in massive outbreaks before disappearing again with seemingly no pattern. Now, as you might imagine from dozens of people living in high density above a cesspit and a single toilet, which they all shared, the smell was unimaginable and any outbreak of disease spread rapidly. So, putting two and two together, the general consensus at the time was that diseases like cholera spread through foul odours in the air, which was the miasma theory. And if you have a limited understanding of medicine and science, it's easy to see how this is a rational conclusion to come to. I mean, after all, that smell is disgusting, that disease is disgusting, the smell travels, the disease travels, so therefore the smell is the disease. Except no, that isn't how cholera spreads. It's easy to look back all high and mighty today and say, oh my god, how could a disease travel through smell? But in the early 1800s, the idea of germs and bacteria even existing was still being developed. Anyway, under the miasma theory, living nearby to other people was incredibly dangerous. However, given most people probably didn't choose to live in these conditions, they weren't really able to do anything about that. So the cycle of outbreaks and deaths just continued with everyone blaming the smell which they couldn't do anything about. Except for Jon Snow. He had been a long-time skeptic of the miasma theory, based on his understanding of anaesthetics and the still-developing germ theory. In fact, in 1849, he published On the Communication of Cholera, in which he laid out some pretty horrific findings such as slops of dirty water got into the well from which they obtained their water, and when this well was later emptied, a large quantity of black and highly offensive deposit was found in it. Some pipes carrying waste were even found to have no bottom, or one so soft it could be penetrated with a stick. All of which led him to the conclusion that cholera spread through water, not the air. His findings were shocking, but most of the people reading the publication were too posh or preoccupied to care, especially as there wasn't a major outbreak currently going on. Fast forward five years, and Snow finally got the chance to test his theory when water from washing the clothes of a cholera-infected baby were thrown into a nearby privy. The water infected the nearby well on Broadwick Street, which back then was just called Broad Street, via a leaky pipe. And within weeks, 700 people within a quarter mile of the pipe had died. This wasn't far from where Snow was living, so he immediately decided to investigate. He started collecting data on who had died and where, and straight away he noticed a few notable gaps. A nearby prison had over 500 inmates, yet had zero deaths, whilst a nearby brewery also had many workers who lived around the area, and yet none of them had died either. It turned out that the prison had its own private well, as did the brewery, the workers at which only drank from the well or the beer they had made. Whilst just down the road at number 37, a factory which got its water exclusively from the main Broad Street pump had 16 out of its 37 workers contract the disease. Though, as well as gaps in the death toll, there were also outliers. Most notably, the death of a 59-year-old woman occurred almost 4 miles away which didn't fit the pattern at all until it turned out that she had water from the pump taken to her house every day because she preferred the taste. The evidence was finally enough to convince the local council to remove the handle from the Broad Street pump. And after the pump handle was removed, the outbreak stopped dead. Going forward, having figured out how to prevent the spread of cholera, the government put into place the appropriate measures to make sure another outbreak never occur. What are you doing? Putting the pump handle back on. But it's poisonous. Raw sewage literally flows into that thing and causes cholera. Oh yeah, no, we decided it doesn't do that. But I just proved it, the outbreak stopped. Eh, nah, that was probably just a coincidence.
The problem was, if the government had wanted to take preventative measures as instructed by Snow, then they would also have to accept the theory that at some point, human feces was entering human mouths. This was, simply put, too vulgar to contemplate, and so as soon as the Soho outbreak had stopped, the pump handle was immediately reinstated and the whole thing was forgotten. I mean, can you imagine that today? Politicians blatantly ignoring and refusing to believe hard scientific evidence with clear results and direct impact on people's lives except for when it benefits their public perception or temporarily solves one part of a larger scale issue to do so? The theory wasn't accepted until over 15 years later, during a subsequent outbreak when Snow's rival William Farr once again proved that water was the culprit. Tragically, by now, Snow had died, but the theory had enough scientific backing that its importantness outweighed its vulgarness, and preventative measures were finally adopted. Waste management and water sources were completely overhauled, most notably in the world's first proper sewer system designed by Joseph Bazalgette, but he deserves a video to himself. And so, you have a physician who conducted pioneering research and created a whole new field of medicine, which has led to millions of lives being saved all around the world over many generations, but only after his findings were shunned until after his death. How do you thank him? How fittingly British.